Hey guys, Queso here, and today I'm going to be doing a breakdown of my flux capacitor edit. And what I'm going to be doing with this is I'm basically going to, going to be running through this edit, letting you know everything that I did in it, because there are a bunch of people that were commenting on my edit, wondering how I did a lot of the effects and stuff. So I'm going to go ahead and go through it, and I'm going to go ahead and teach you guys. So I want to just go over all the effects that I used and what I did to make all the effects so let's go ahead and get started okay so in the beginning I had the editors club intro I guess the first thing that I can show you guys is my color correction I used magic bullet looks as usual it is right here this adjustment layer go down to looks let's go to effects uh, edit looks <coughs> Wait for this to load up. Uh, uh, oh. There we go. Uh, this is all the stuff that I had in here. Contrast, saturation, color filter, diffusion, gradient. I had a purple gradient coming down. Um, gradient exposure and more exposure on the top as you can see down here. I had a vignette around it. And I had anamorphic flares and swing tilt, shutter streaks down here and stuff and crush okay so that was that yeah um, there's the intro and the color correction that I showed you and I made the black bars on the outside using black solid I used uh, let's see here which one I use uh, yeah this one is the black bars on the outside I made a black solid and then I put a grid on it and I generated a grid and I used these settings for it so if you want to make the black bars you can do that and then you can always change the border around yeah control Z that okay so that's what I did for the black bars and uh, this these screens I made in here okay so presents dumb stuff over Reddit flux capacitor put these together in here using just text and number scale all these different things then I made a solid I just made them in their own composition and I brought them into this camera solve which I motion tracked in Buju I motion tracked this in Buju and then I put these into the camera solve so then I motion tracked these in these two screens and then I put that whole motion tracked composition into here. And then I right hear this transition. I think someone was asking about this. Well, let's see here. This transition is the Venetian <coughs> Venetian blinds transition. Let's see. What did I put? I think it's in here. Yeah, Venetian blinds up here. That's the transition I had. These are the settings that I had show you here just motion I just uh, put two keyframes um, okay what else For some reason this clips weird it doesn't show until I, it renders the frame but uh, here are the effects that I had for this first clip um, I had Twixter of course I had ripple which is this thing in the middle the ripple effect whenever I shot there's a ripple effect around it just um, coming from the middle of the screen right there you can see it and uh, I had glow every time I shot see right here glow that's what I used for every time I shot I had it light up with glow and then at the end when it was like uh, like that sound or whatever I had the glow flash back and forth um, and then I had optics compensation for the for the transition out of this clip that's what this is this whole effect where it goes out at you and then I just had from the optics compensation once it went out I changed turn the transparency down as you can see and I had it basically just fade into the other clip so that was that 
Um, CC power pin. I use this. Oh, where'd you go? Okay. Uh, I use the CC power pin at the beginning right here. This was the thing. See how it's going down? It's a pretty simple thing. It just basically morphed it up, upward. For in the beginning of the clip. Um, okay, so that's that are that's all the effects that I had for there. Oh, also I had um, the explosion. As you can see right here. And what I did for that was I made a black solid. This black solid. And then I um, masked out where the gun is and then I made that a track mat to the explosion in the background this explosion so it would be behind the gun and this explosion is just from uh, what's it called Hold on, I'll show you okay uh, action essentials that's what it's called um, yeah just have it in here action essentials 2 and it gives you all this great stuff. You can look it up. You can probably find a download link for all that good stuff. Okay, so yeah, I used that from Action Essentials. I made a track mat to have it go behind the gun and look more realistic. And I also I think I changed this to add or something. Hold on, let me check. Uh, yeah, I changed it to add as well. Just makes it blended more with it. Uh, and then I put the boom on the scope. Uh, <laughs> What I do for that uh, for the boom I masked out around it and I put a feather on it to kind of make it fade out on the edges uh, and I also put for the effects on that I put a CC lens and I the settings I had for my CC lens are right here put the convergence negative so it kind of goes backwards around the edge so it looks like the text is really on the scope uh, and then that's it for that clip and then I had the optics compensation go into the next clip and then for this for uh, all these cinematics where are they mm, right up here okay uh, yeah I got these cinematics um, the effect into this cinematic is optics compensation I used it again I put it back to where it was on the previous clip at the very end and then it just kind of came out again under there. And I put a glow on this adjustment layer, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Or this adjustment layer right here, yeah. I had a glow every time. See that, that flash thing that it gave, that it gave off? That flash is all from the glow effect that I used right here. Pretty simple. I just messed around with the settings. Um, you can do that as well. So yeah, I had the glow and I had um, a directional blur for in between each clip. Okay, so I had a directional blur and I had it the position change, so it goes off and up right. And for this one, I had it move upward and it came down. And then, huh, what transition do I use right here? Okay, this transition right here this is actually a really complex transition that I did. It took me a while. But uh, let's see here. Where is it? Oh, right here. Um, I had a still frame for each of these things, each little portion of the scope. And I had them come up and rotate inward all the all at the same time as where is it this had the CC radial scale wipe the CC radial scale wipe is the little lens looking thing right here it's kind of like CC lens but it's different it's more of a transition based uh, effect you can find it in the tra effect transitions and CC whatever it was scale wipe or something yeah radial scale wipe um, so yeah, I had that and then I tracked the rotation right here. I keyframe the rotation. And then right here that effect. Let's go here. Effects no, I had an adjustment layer. Okay. It's on the adjustment layer. Um it is the wave warp. 
That is that effect right there where it goes to the side and then those are my settings for the waveboard um, so and then the second time you shot there's just more glow and I had a radial blur CC radial blur so it was CC radial blur and glow and then I made the these things on the scope rotate around and what I did for that let's go here scope ring is what I made. I made another composition just like how I did with these. But I made it for the scope ring. So we can go ahead and open this up. And you can see right here that it's just rotating around. So that's what I did for that. And this is how I made it. I made a shape layer. This adjustment layer. I don't remember what I had on it. Let's see. I had CC lens. Uh -huh. Just to change it and make it look like it was on the scope. Uh, and what I did for this, I'll show you my stuff. Uh, blah, 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 blah. That's what I had. You know, look at this. Uh, huh. Barely remember what I did for this, but I basically screwed around with a bunch of the settings. Um, I changed this, changed the dashes around a lot. This is a lot of what I messed with. And I changed with the and I wiggled the offset right here by Alt clicking on the stopwatch. And that's what gave it the rotation is with wiggle it just makes it rotate by itself just wiggle back and forth so that's what I did for that um, and I just put that layer put this uh, composition into my final composition right here where is it yeah it's right here see the scope ring I put it in there three times I just copied it in there and then I changed the opacity of them and stuff and yeah so that's what I did for that and then the CC lens made it look like it was actually on the lens and then let's see yeah I had the the glow again right here see the glow all the keyframes that made it flash and then how do I transition out of this oh yeah this transition so what a lot of people didn't know about is this transition right that here um, this transition right here is probably right here. Yeah, the flow motion transition is what I made. It's actually pretty easy. It looks cool, but it's actually a pretty easy transition. Uh, you can look right here. Oh, go effects, see flow motion. And yeah, I just basically messed around with it. Uh, changed the knots, the amount, but you can mess around with it and make it however you want. You can see the keyframes I said. If you just look at that, that's one keyframe in the middle. And I put it back to normal on each sides, each of the sides. Uh, so that's what I did for that transition, and I had it, and I had it change on the beat. It's right here when it changes to the other clip. I made sure that it was on the beat and synced. <clears throat> so now on to this clip. It's a hard hat quad feed. Okay. Oh no no no. So it's basic Twixter, and then I had glow again. Or is it? Yeah, so I had Twixter for that, and I had glow. I just had a regular glow flash like I did for all the other ones. Twixter, glow, Twixter, glow. And then I had, yeah, Twixter, glow, all that stuff. Um, <laughs> and then right here. What I used right here is I used the particles and I used another track mat right here. Oh, let's see. Yeah. So I, uh, for the particles, what I used is I used uh, Trap Code Particular. It's a plugin that I, you have to download, you have to go find. It doesn't come with After Effects, but I got it and I love it. I've used it a lot in some of my recent edits. It gives it a really nice look and I don't know I love it you can do a lot of stuff with it um, yeah so I use that to generate particles and I had them going outwards if you want to see what I have here those are all my settings for the emitter and particle yeah so I basically messed around with that and I had the emitter in the center and then I did a, a mat particles matter whatever with another black solid just like I did for the explosion 
just so it didn't show on the scope so it only showed on the outside so that's what I did for that uh, and to set a mat you have to go into here and then you can look at this track mat and then once you've masked out the black solid I put a black solid and then I masked out this part just the circle and then I set the particles right here you have to set the track mat right above the particles and then you change this to alpha inverted particles mat which is it'll show in uh, in quotations right here whatever track you have above this so you have to make sure that your um, mat track is right above the one that you want to attach it to so that's what I use for that I use the toggle switches modes thing down here to get to it uh, okay so that's what I did for that and I did glow and particles with the mat and then I had the flashing again I'm pretty sure with the glow and oh, where is it oh yeah this transition where is it it's a blob blobalize or whatever yeah right here CC blobalize that's what I use for the transition just made some keyframes and I believe I changed the opacity of both the clips to both the clips so then it just faded into the other one here comes the next clip okay and for here let's go to the effects that I used okay I used glow again I used radial blur and color offset and lens right here it's just glow and lens so I did glow and lens for there and then someone was asking about um, the the flares in the window and that's just that's just a part of the color correction the anamorphic flares in the color correction it's not something I just added in it's I didn't add in that flare s specifically but it was a part of the color correction so that's that and yeah so for each of these beats right here I used CC lens to make it come out on the edges and I used the glow so that's what was for those two and then, uh, right here CC lens glow again glow CC lens glow radial blur and color offset was for this one I used lens again and glow just as usual but in addition I used the radial blur and the color offset the color offset is what it made the color change obviously gave it like that reddish look red and purple that looks pretty cool and then there's the radial blur going around the outside edges and I have the flashing again with the glow and then right here for this transition I use CC scatter eyes hold on let, I'll show you that uh, where is it is it on here yeah CC scatter eyes right here and I basically just kept everything the same I just changed the scatter and then I didn't use any of the twisting or anything so I use scatter for this just CC scatter as that was all I used for that transition and then I had it fade away and then I had the this way thing on the ground and that was another some other compositions that I used I made the arrows I'll show you how I made the arrows okay uh, yellow arrow right here uh, huh. I made a shape layer and I made a yellow triangle and then on that I had where is it oh uh, for the adjustment layer over it that I put I made a grid and I added some glow to it to make it glow but the grid was what made it um, look like a grid and this is what I had set up for it so that's what I did and okay yeah so I just basically changed the opacity for them to make them like light up and then go in an order so I just keyframe the opacity to make them blink like that and then I wiggled the opacity of the this way text and I made them 3D so I could rotate them and put them along the floor and um, back here against the wall 
is just a where is it audio spectrum is this thing that's just you can go you can look up the plug-in audio spectrum it comes with after effects so you should have it and I just messed around with the settings in here you can see what I had and for and I had it come up right here I used a linear wipe so it came up that was the transition that I used for the audio spectrum specifically so then after that then I just had that going and then this transition right here where is it probably right here okay uh, la, 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 la. yeah uh, it's this one right here is what I used I used the CC light wipe is what is the it's you can find it in effects transitions uh, CC light wipe that's what I used for this on the sides and these are my settings for it okay so that's what I used for the transition I just had it come in from the sides and then Twixter of course and all that good stuff had a knife and then right here I had a flare up here that I made myself in optical flares um, video copilot optical flares and this doesn't come the optical flares don't come with after effects either you have to go get them but I highly suggest getting them because they're add a nice touch to a lot of situations that you might encounter in your editing experience okay so I use that I put it up there in the window and yeah I just basically keyframed it in made sure that it was tracked with the window and yeah I made this flare myself I just <clears throat> went ahead and did it myself to make an original flare uh, okay yeah so that's what I did for that part right there and I believe I had a, yeah I had a glow every time it lights up like right here I had a glow and I did a what did I do for here let's go to my effects I did a directional blur I made it go left and right 90 degree angle Blur length. I just mess. I just changed that. Keyframe that in. And then I had the glow flashing again. And then right here, this is pretty intricate and pretty hard to do. Uh, it took a little bit, but I did a track mat again for this grid. I generated a grid on a black solid. I didn't made a black solid. Generated a grid. And then I put it up against the wall, and then I created a track mat, and I masked out all of these little tiny areas on the wall, and then I set it as a track mat to the grid. And then I had the grid come in, as you can see right here. It came out like that with a CC lens, is what I used for the grid. Just came out against the wall. And then, I can't believe, I can't remember. Okay, yeah, I did a CC lens at the end too, to have it go away. And then, yeah, it disappeared after that. And then I come around here. And I had the glow again. I don't remember if I did anything for that. I don't, I don't think I did anything for that shot right there. But, okay. And then Twixter and he shoots. And then I did Twitch, glow. And I put a blood splatter on the wall, which is also from Action Essentials or whatever. Uh, there's blood splatters in there, and I use that blood splat right here. And for the blood splat, I masked out his foot because his foot was there to put the blood splatter behind the foot because it wouldn't make sense if it was just over his foot because it's on the wall. And then I just had it fade it out using the transparency or I used a black solid over it and I just had the transparency come in so it was at zero from here and then it just faded out to a black solid the other things that I used were basic stuff such as <clears throat> I put a wiggle on it I made a movement null right here and I attached all of the clips to the movement null, null. as you can see right here I parented the clips 
and that allowed me to go in here and I went to position on the movement null and I alt clicked on it and I created a wiggle so that's what that's how you get that effect where see right here it's kind of like rotating and moving back and forth to and fro and whatnot yeah that was the effect that I used for that and uh, I yeah I also did that for the rotation I did the wiggle for the rotation I'll click on it type in wiggle parentheses and just put in whatever number the first number is uh, what is the first number the first number is how many times per second you want it to wiggle and then the second one is the second number comma second number is um, how much you want it to wiggle in that period of time so I wanted it to wiggle two degrees every one second once every second so that's what I did for that and I parented it to all of them of course um, and I also used I changed the scale a lot for every for the when he shoots and stuff I made the scale come out I also changed that and yeah so that's what I did for all the movement and stuff and uh, let's see if there's anything else uh, no that looks like it's it uh, yeah those were all the effects that I used in my flux capacitor edit I hope this helped you out guys and I hope it cleared up any of your questions that you had on what I did and it taught you something uh, just let me know if you have any questions you can leave a comment message me whatever you want and don't forget to rate the video or favorite it or whatever if you enjoyed it and if you favorite it, you can always come back to it, look in your favorites and stuff. So it's always a good thing. Um, I will see you guys later. Thanks for watching.